Okie dokie. What we have is an old C. Will. C. Will Liverpool pocket watch. So, a gentleman who runs an Etsy shop, E T S Y shop, called Justin Time. Justin Time, kind of a cool name. Um, he provided this to me and said, hey, if you can fix this, go ahead. So, again, Justin Time from, uh, from Etsy. So this is a kind of cool old pocket watch. I believe, I think Liverpool obviously British, but when I flip it back here and I have a look inside, it's a bit tarnished, but I think that can be cleaned up a bit. And look at the case, it's kind of black here. I'm not sure what that's all about, but it's kind of neat. And this is also, looks like it's black a bit, and there's a serial number there, and it looks like it's been maintained one time so it's been cleaned oh there's one there there's one here so there's two marks on the inside and I don't believe there's any marks here but I have the movement no marks here and there's the movement and the movement says Swiss so this movement says junior and then it says Swiss so it says Junior non-magnetic made in Switzerland. So now got a quick look at this watch and I noticed straight away I got a very small pair of tweezers here that uh, the balance is um, loose as heck which generally means the balance staff is broken. So I could probably carefully um, take this out. So what I'll do is I'll just remove this balance here from the uh, from the movement again I recommend just taking the whole thing apart but I'm going to see if I can just so I don't have to stack this into another uh, another bunch of um, another watch holding case so I just unscrew this here if I can get my screwdriver in there there we go there we go so I unscrew that I have to move the uh, light around because it seems like it's blanking off here. And there's the screw. And let me just move my light around here a bit so I can get a better angle on this here. So there it is there. Now what I typically do is I'd be put my um, screwdriver in the base here and just wiggle it a bit to get the movement to get the balance out and that works great. If it doesn't, I have, may have to use plan B, which is removing the... Uh, oh, there we go. Get some action there. And then just let me see if I can pick this right up. It depends if it's if the movement itself, the case is in the way. So, well, I got it right there. i just tip it sideways to get it out of the center gear. And move it out of the way. Now, let me go grab a balance holder here before I break anything and do this there we go okay right, so that's balances set aside now if, what I'd like to do though is see if this balance the fork here the pallet fork actually snaps back and forth so what I'm going to do I, I took the tension off of the mainspring so what I'm going to do is put tension on the mainspring like so that and I'll be cleaning this watch completely so I'm not too concerned with this right now um, and I'm just going to touch the balance fork just a bit to see if this thing moves at all so as you can see there's the balance and the balance fork and if I touch it like that you know, the balance fork does indeed snap back and forth so we're we're good with the mainspring we're good with all of the wheels and mechanisms so the only problem here is the balance staff pivots are probably broken. Just a note, when you uh, clean watches, I'm just going to show you some oil that I use. Uh, let's see if I can find this oil. Oh, there it is. So when you clean the watch, um, I've got this oil called Mobius 9415. So this oil, other than the normally the normal watches you use, like the 10 or the 20 on the gears, or the pivots here, um, this 9415, you actually put it on the 
the palette stones right here. So right here on the left or left right or whatever side, each each palette stone, you put a little tiny bit on the stone, and it passes it right to the escapement, and then that provides enough. You don't want too much friction here. And I was talking to a gentleman, a friend of mine who's a watchmaker, and he said, if you get the stone grabbing too much, like holding too much, then you have to heat the uh, the uh, pallet fork up. And that, that heats the shellac that holds the stones in here. And then you have to f push those stones in more, ever so slightly. Just kind of regulating the stones so they don't catch as much. Now, if the stones are completely backed into the uh, pallet fork here and there's no room for this at all, then that's not going to work at all. So he also said there's a really good article that he's going to send me. And the whole and this article is on banking pins and the adjustment of banking pins. This movement itself doesn't look like you can rotate the banking pins. Maybe you can, but it doesn't look like it when I look straight down. So I think that uh, the problem here is the the balance and the, um, the pivots. So let me have a look at this. Uh, it's going to get a little sloppy here. So what I'm going to do is flip this over and again all under video which is I don't normally like doing this but going to flip this over and I'll be back in two seconds um, and there we go so there's the balance there um, then I'll take the uh, I'll use a very fine screwdriver and I got to change goggles I change eyepieces maybe well, no, I can do it with this eyepiece so what I'm going to do here is just remove the stud so I can take the balance out and we'll have a look at the pivots, but I know that balance, the pivots are bad on this, I can kind of tell. So let me just see if I can get a screwdriver in here, because this looks mighty small. Yeah, this is mighty small, i got to go to a smaller screwdriver. The yellow ones usually work. I don't know what millimeter the yellow ones are, or what size, but they usually work. And I've... Uh, and I put a little bit of wear on these blades too, so I'm not 100% confident that, that these blades are as, as good as they should be. Um, so, let me think, I think I got the wrong blade here. So, white ones, the yellow ones, la di da di da, yada yada yada. Yeah, this doesn't seem like it's fitting in here, but oh, there we go. I just have to back it off just a bit, and I typically just turn that around, lay it down like this, and then push the stud out. Is that coming out? It should just fall out. There we go. Yeah, the stud is officially out. Um, the other thing you should do, which I forgot to do, is I've got to get this uh, regulator out of the way. So I'm going to just flip this over again, very carefully, and then I'm going to turn this regulator out of the way. And there's usually a way of doing that, but I think I'm going to have to use tweezers to do this, because I don't think I can turn it. There's no slot on it for a screwdriver. Usually there's a screwdriver slot right there and you can just turn it, so let me see if I can turn this with tweezers. Yeah, I can I can. I just gonna be very careful so I don't screw up the hairspring. So I'm just twisting it there. Let's see if that's good enough. Yeah, there we go. So there we go there. So it's open now, so so that came out. I'll just put this aside for a second and have a look at the uh, at the balance. So I'm looking at straight at the balance. This is really interesting. So if you look at one side of the balance, I'm going to try to see if I can focus in on this at all. You'll see that the um, come on, focus for me, baby. There on one side the. Uh, pivot is completely broken off. You can see that, right? Pivot's completely broken off. Now if I turn it over to the other side, it's not only broken off on the other side, but it's also 
curly Q bent. It's, uh, let me see, see if I can get a focus here. Come on. I think I gotta spend a few bucks and get a new camera because this really sucks. And you folks out there are gonna bear with me, but I wanted to show you the bent pivot. You know what I might do is magnify it and then see if the camera will pick up the magnification. Oh, there we go. There's a pivot on this end, and the pivot is bent on one side and then curly cued on the other side. So that's just crazy. So the pivots, this whole balance staff needs to be replaced. So, which means I've got to cut a new balance staff because there's no way I can replace this balance staff the way it is. So, again, I've got to strip strip this down, put that in there, and remove the hairspring. And like I did last time, the smartest thing to do on these watches is to mark where the stud is. I can just put a little red mark here. So when I put that balance back, the stud is actually completely aligned with the uh, one of the timing screws, I think. So I just painted the timing sp screw red. And I think I can get under this with the uh, with my screwdrivers to, re to get it out. So let me see if I can just get, my, get myself underneath here a bit. So I can take it from the side and then come on the edge. And then take it from the other side and come on the edge. And then what you do is you push in a bit and twist. And usually the uh, spring will come straight out. I think it's working fine. And sometimes you need more of a screwdriver. Uh, this thing is coming out. So, so there it is. I'm make sure this is all centered for the video. So, I don't know what's going on here, but my lighting sucks. The lighting sucks. Lighting looks really good on the uh, side. You just go right here. Lighting's better right there. So anyway, so that's the uh, hairspring. So you grab the collet, and the hairspring looks like it's in excellent condition. No problem there at all. Just gonna put this aside. And now I look at the um, the balance here and the balance staff. And I'll I'll pop this thing out, and then I'll show you what it looks like. The jewel looks good. The jewel's in place. And the jewel is looks like it's 45 degrees. Eh, a little bit off from 45, but kind of looks 45 degrees from the uh, from the arm here. And the arm is the Swiss. Some of these Swiss watches, or a lot of these Swiss pocket watches, the arm just goes straight through, so you don't have a bit break on one side and a break on the other side. So if you screw it up, you just screw it up. But it has less chance of bending that way. Um, and but it has all of the weight and like the timing and temperature screws it looks like it's only made of one piece of metal though so I don't think it was a very high-end watch right. now I'll just take my handy dandy getting rid of the uh, the roller table device so this is actually pretty handy this device because it's so fast all I have to do is find the right one slide it in like that slid in like that pick the right stake and it doesn't matter because I'm not too worried about the uh, damaging the uh, balance on this one here so I do have to find myself a hammer I'm close up here when I'm doing this I should be going back a bit but this is my close up video I guess so I got myself a stake here and I'll just put it on top of the, uh, the pivot of the balance staff and then just knock it out. That's one hit. And you see how that's now just sitting on top. So there it is there. And it's one unit. This is one unit. So there it is there. And it also it looks pretty good. So just set that aside for now. And now I've got the balance here. And I'm going to put the uh, the tool I use to pop the staff out. 
and so I've got it like this. Now this staff, I'm not sure whether the staff is friction fit or there's a rivet on the end. If I look really closely, I'll notice whether it's riveted or not. Because if it's riveted, I want to put that in my lathe and punch it out probably. But you know what? It kind of looks friction fit. It looks like a pretty simple staff too. Doesn't look like there's any fancy stuff on the ends. It looks like it's just there's no fancy cut on the end, so so I'm going to turn the camera off for two seconds while I set this up. All right, now I'm going to punch this thing out. So the first thing I do in my staking set is I find a hole that this fits into. I'm going to decide to punch it out as opposed to uh, cutting it out. So hopefully it's successful. So I push my alignment stake down first. Just move this over a bit. I push my alignment stake down first, then I tighten this on the back for my staking set and then I figure out which side I want to punch out and I want to punch it down this way and just so I've got the right hole again like I make sure I've got the right hole and then my and then I make sure that this sits sits into that hole there we go so the arm doesn't get in the way and this little device here um, is used to punch the stake out. So this holds it nice and tight against the balance arm. Well, I use one of these two punches to punch it out. So what I do is I look at the punches on the end. One is bigger than the other, but this is the story of my life. So this one here is probably going to work. Let me have a look. The pivot on the end is broken on these, so it's kind of crappy. So I might actually take my tweezers and straighten that pivot out first because it doesn't look like the punch is coming over it nicely so I can just grab that pivot and straighten it like so actually I just broke it off which is doesn't matter because I just need to punch this thing out so so I could probably use either of these I've got two of these depending on what size um, balance staff you have you use one or the other so so I put this in place like so then I make sure everything is sitting down nice and tightly. Then you unscrew this. I think I showed how to do this once in another video. And I put it in like this. And then I take the punch I'm going to use and put it down the center and make sure it goes through everything, right? Everything is aligned. Now there's a hole on the side of this here, right, right there. And you take a peek through the hole and make sure that you can see the top of the stake here pushing on the end of that pivot before you tighten everything up. So I typically just use a, a light and I look through that hole just to make sure everything is good to go. So you just go like this, have a look, and you should be able to see the thing going down through there. So, and I'm just gonna look through the other side and have a look like that's all you need to do and then have a look and wait I'm going to turn this off for a second all right I had a peak and we're good so now next step is to tighten this so you can unscrew it like that a bit and then you tighten it by pushing the arm this way and then you have it nice and snug in there and this is so the the balance arm doesn't get bent when you pound down here so so when I pound down the uh, there that should have dropped right through let's see what kind of damage I've done pull that back and hopefully I got myself the thing is out hopefully there we go so that's like that and then when I take this out, as you can see, there's the balance and the arm is perfectly flat. There's no damage there at all, which is great. I'm just going to put this aside and I can actually see the balance staff right here. The question is, can I lift it out of the hole again? There we go. 
so it's out, out of the hole now and I'm going to just see if I can zoom in on it right here right, that'd be cool and there's the balance staff and if I get myself a nice zoom that'd be great there we go so that's the balance staff um, and it's I got the camera kind of leaning on the uh, on the side of the staking set but so what I'm going to do is use this balance staff as my master here and then I'm going to cut another balance staff and then I'm going to reinstall this so basically what I've done is found out the problem was the balance staff pivots were both completely gone on the end and not just just gone just broken right off um, the uh, balance staff itself kind of doesn't look like it was riveted in but now that I look at the uh, now that I look at this balance staff it does look like there's kind of an edge on where that balance was sitting on the um, on the uh, yeah, where, where it's seating in there's three levels here that you gotta look at right so um, I'm gonna reposition my camera now just hang on one second Okay, there's the balance staff there. I'm not going to move my hand at all, but as you can see, um, it's pretty small. But the balance staff, um, let's see, grab this thing a bit. Yeah, maybe you can see the rivet on the end there. The rivet on the balance staff. Uh, i got to cut this thing, and there we go. There's the balance staff there. There's a bit of an, an angle on the... Um, where the balance goes onto the staff. So I think there was a bit of a rivet on the end. So I gotta make sure that when I recut the staff, I leave enough edge so that I can rivet the staff back onto the balance once it's cut. So, and I usually cut it, I usually start on the hairspring side of the balance and then work my way in. Um, Cause there's, um, there's a, I guess hairspring on one side level and then the th where I'm clamping the balance right now is where the uh, where the roller table would go on so I usually cut it from the hairspring side first because I use one piece of metal and then I cut the uh, the balance at the height of the, the very the, the, the biggest diameter and I work my way down to the second biggest diameter is where the balance would be uh, staked in and then riveted and then the next diameter would be where the roller table goes and in this balance here it didn't look, seem like it has a heart shape on the end to catch any extra oil so I just have to stop there and then make the pivot on the end and then I usually cut the end where I'm pinching it with the tweezers first and then I um, I cut or after this uh, I cut that while it's still in the uh, in the collet and then I cut it off, flip it around, put it, find another collet, put it back in, and finish the pivot on this side. And then I use uh, stones and stuff to uh, to get that pivot down to the right side. This pr size, this thing looks pretty small. Um, and I use my, uh, I got a pin, I got some uh, gauges, pin gauges I use to stick into the jewel to make sure I've got the right size. Um, usually the uh, bounce cock jewel. The uh, top one is usually the same size as the bo bottom one, so I use the top one as my reference, so I can so I can use my uh, set to determine how big that uh, pivot is. But I have a whole there's I think I have a video called making a complete Waltham balance staff. So I have a video where you can see how a balance staff is completely made, and then so but I'm going to make this balance staff, and I'm going to reinstall everything, and there's no doubt it'll work because the uh, there was energy like when I with this watch here there was plenty of energy when I tapped the pa pallet fork let me lift this I gotta recondition my light here somehow but when I tapped that pallet fork here um, there was lots of um, it snapped back and forth which is good news and once I oil this up nicely after I'm gonna what I usually do is I make the balance staff do everything put it back make sure it works it all works strip it all down clean it and then reassemble it again. So that way, I know there's energy in, the, in in all the springs here, the main spring, and going to the uh, the uh, 
center wheel and then like one, two, one, two, three, four, and then f so it's not an issue at all. The other thing I'd like to say though is that um, with this pocket watch, uh, if I use Peak, which is a kind of cool, uh, it's a cool uh, cleaning uh, goo or toothpaste or paste or something. I'll show you how that works. Let me just stand up for a second and annoy you by not having anything in the video and grab the tube of Peak and see if it actually works on this. But Peak, this is what it looks like. So it looks like this, it's called Peak. Um, you can get it at pretty much any hardware store. Up here in Canada we go to Canadian Tire that's been around for 40, 50 years I think. And uh, they sell it here. And let me see if this works. I'm going to take a dirty old rag here and and see what I can do. Just dab a little bit on the end of the dirty old rag. The dirty old rag. What I got to do as well is make sure I don't lose the balance staff. Because <laughs> I actually don't. Oh, I know where it is. It's that way. Anyway, so I take the peak and I just put a put a bit on a cloth and then start some small circles here. Just put it on there and let it sit for a few seconds. And you'll see the difference in this thing. I'm gonna close it close it up here. So I can get some stability. And then put a little bit more on here. And I use this on silver and gold and but if you use too much Whoa Jeez, catastrophe. I think we had an earthquake. <laughs> if you use too much peak on gold, it'll take all your gold off. You don't want to do that. So I use a, a, a tiny bit of peak on there and it just gets into it. See, I almost pulled the cable over again. I got this cord for the camera sitting right, ne right next to the, uh, right next to my hand. So I'll see if I can get rid of some of the, uh, Hitting here. Not sure if it's going to work. It's a little shinier because I can tell because I'm pulling dirt off. But it's like bronzo or silvo, one of those chemicals that I used to use when I was in the army. And you take your uh, silvo and you sit there for three hours at ten at night so that you look so good the next day in the par on parade. It's like, oh my god, that guy looks sharp. He looks like he spent like two years with his silvo. So, so let me see. I'd have to back the video up and see if this is making any difference. Eh? Just put some more on there. And then small circles. Ah, I keep hitting this cable. Man, I got a coffee cup here. I'll just move the coffee cup out of the way. There we go. Now hopefully I don't. It doesn't tumble over on me again. And I'm going to lean into it a bit more. I don't think you're supposed to get this stuff on your hands because uh, it'll probably dissolve your fingers. Uh, I uh, played guitar yesterday in a bit of a outdoor rib fest and we did five songs and I did got to play Steve Ray Vaughan Pride and Joy and it was kind of fun. Anyway, I don't think I screwed it up too bad, but I'm going to probably get the video in and, and an email and see how bad it was. Now you see all the, the black there? That means it's working really well. So, And to prove it, I'll take a, a cloth that's relatively clean, like that, and I'll put that on my finger like this. And I'll t put a little peek on that, like this, and I'll start peeking my way again and see what it see what kind of an action I get on this. It's it's all about how much elbow grease you put in. Now the other technique, because this is an old watch, is I get my Dremel tool out and I put a put a disc on there that's kind of a, a soft soft disc pad and I just Dremel my buns off and it definitely takes takes the uh, marks out but as you can see, this is also working. And but this will take forever, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna shine it up for a second and see if there's any difference here. But that's look at how much stuff is coming off there. 
so this peak will just dissolve that some of that metal in there and get rid of some of that dirt and that cleans up the uh, pocket watch considerably and I, my pad here gets all dirty and then I end up just putting another one down I got that at the dollar store so I'm just yapping away here so hopefully you're not bored shitless with my yapping but hang on one more second I just want to show you that I'm getting a good shine on that so I haven't done the edges here but I'll do those later and I might do a Dremel tool thing on this to make it look even better to really shine it up because I think it has potential potential for some significant shining now if you look at that just look at this you'll see that I got not bad of a shine on this old pocket watch anyway that's uh, that's all I'm going to do for now I uh, hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you got any comments let me know I will be reassembling this baby um, as soon as I make that balance staff there's the balance there's the roller table there's the staff there is the hairspring with the collet and the stud there's the balance cock here that's the whole family right there and then once I get that done I'm going to reassemble it so thanks a lot thanks for watching and talk right, I'm back so if you can remember what this watch looked like before nice dirty hands so what I did is I used my Dremel tool my Dremel tool and I just used a sanding disc and I sanded away this thing was pitted like crazy and I sanded away the majority of the pitting um, and then I used a uh, another disc with some cutting um, compound in there and got rid of that and then I used a, a polishing disc and I did some polishing so this thing was you have to look at the early part of this video this thing was pretty cruddy and now it's not too bad probably still a little bit more work in the back here but in general it's looking pretty good it's back to a decent looking case. There's still a little bit of pitting back here that I'd have to grind away even more material to get rid of so I don't want to do that. Anyway, so not bad. Good looking pocket watch starting to come around. Now that is the end of the video.